Um, so let's explain why the people that are overweight with diabetes and with heart disease are more likely to be hospitalized and have worst outcomes if they do contract the virus is because their body is already in a state of inflammation. And then when you get an infection, the body, you know, the armies come in and it creates more inflammation to attack the virus. And then there's an overreaction of the body. So there's a whole cascade of inflammatory response and then the body shuts down. Mm -hmm. So you could lower your risk of becoming severely ill if you do get in touch with this virus and you do get it, if your blood sugar is steady and you don't have high blood sugar, if you're thinner and if you're healthier. So I wanna let people know this virus isn't going anywhere anytime soon. We're gonna to have to learn how to live with it. We can't stay locked up in our houses forever. And there's with certain precautions like wearing a mask, staying six feet away, keeping your immunity at its peak is part of the, you know, we don't talk enough about that. Mm -hmm. And we, the way to do that is to avoid high sugar and refined carbohydrates, to avoid those spikes in blood sugar, and to concentrate on high fiber carbohydrates, healthy fats, and enough protein. That combination doesn't have to be really low carb if you don't have a lot of weight to lose. But even thin people should avoid spikes in blood sugar. Carbohydrates are the only macronutrient that converts to blood sugar. Fat doesn't. Protein. So when you when you when we I guess that the general or the the big topic of low carb, what do you advise people as the low carb diet? What what I guess what are most people taking in in their normal carbohydrate intake? Um, mm -hmm. compared to maybe the, the 20 to 40 suggested carbs that, mm -hmm. that, that this lifestyle would, would kind of have you stick to. Yeah, so when you have a lot of weight to lose and you're reversing a disease process like diabetes or prediabetes or, or cholesterol profile, it's a good idea to start low, about 20 grams of net carb a day or 40 grams of net carb a day because then you clear out all that excess sugar, all that excess insulin, and the way you do that is to concentrate on a variety of protein sources, fish, chicken, meat, eggs, a little bit of cheese, um, but a variety of protein. You can do it as a vegetarian if you don't want to eat animal proteins. Just use protein from vegetable sources. And then you concentrate on high fiber carbohydrates like colorful vegetables, berries, nuts, and just count your carbs and keep them under 50 total or 40 net carbs a day, because then it forces the body to switch over to fat metabolism. And that's why your cholesterol improves because you're burning fat. And when you're burning fat for fuel, you lose weight, your cholesterol comes down, you have less risk for heart disease and diabetes. And then concentrate on healthy fats. This is what people, don't always remember avocado, monounsaturated fats like olive oil, a pat of butter is okay. Stay away from hydrogenated processed fats. Stay away from deep fried foods, except for rare occasions. You know, try to bake or broil your food because high heat will change a good fat to a bad fat. Uh, so deep frying isn't such a good idea for the long haul. And then when you're when you see that your energy level is better, your immune system is working better, your blood sugars are better, you're getting closer to your goal weight, you could start adding more carbs. I like to have a low carb tortilla and make a wrap mm -hmm. or I have low carb bread or I'll have an apple or I, I love bananas every once in a while. <laughs> you know, So then you could find how many carbohydrates you could take in before you start gaining weight again. And on keto, the difference between low carb Atkins and keto is they're like hardcore. They stay 20, they stay low, they stay there for a long time. We've been doing this for 40 years. It's not necessary. Okay. It's really not necessary. You can get the same outcome by having more carbohydrates as long as you keep them un under 50. Wow. Do you think that that kind of gets people though at some point with like st strict keto that they get burnt out on it too? Yeah. And that kind of becomes more of the fad. Like I, I know I worked for 
And I always joke that I should have been a lot thinner a long time ago because I worked for so many <laughs> diet companies. Um, you know, I worked for um, Body for Life with a lot of the same folks that I worked at Atkins mm-hmm. with. Right. And and it that diet did work for me too, but it was it frankly was a lot harder to maintain like the Body for Life diet. Like I felt like I was I was living to eat because like I had to like and I was totally cooking all the time and I thought it was a lot more to to maintain. Um, you know, but I think that I also see a lot of fad in a lot of those different companies I've worked for throughout the years where it's, you know, the Fedra's times and all the different things that they've done. So I mean it's interesting that you bring up the fact that Atkins has been around so long because it hasn't changed a ton. Like you've learned to refine it some like the 20 to 40 carbs. I remember when that kind of became. And then we refined it based on the research. The research, Mm. when I looked at all the research and I looked at the participants in the studies and I analyzed how many carbs they're taking in, they were taking in 40 and still losing as much weight as 20. And after eight weeks, they couldn't maintain 20 anymore. Nobody can maintain 20 grams of carb for more than eight weeks in any of the studies. So they still got all the positive outcomes. With that said, so I guess first two things in that. So it, there, there definitely becomes a part of, of, um, of dieting or changing that um, that can be unsafe, unhealthy. So definitely advising to, you know, contact your physicians and make sure you're Absolutely. in a place that you can go to that. Um, and then I guess that that second part of it is. Um, as you said, the key uh, with the keto, um, it's it's a different. Is it a different sugar? What is that? What is the chemical that's different for the brain for the body that makes? Um... Okay, good question. So we run on two fuel systems: either sugar or fat. That's the two energy sources that the body is physically equipped to run on. Okay, so carbohydrates convert to blood sugar. As long as there's enough blood sugar around, the body will burn that fat first, burn that source of energy Mm -hmm. first, okay? Because it's easy molecule, it's four calories per gram in sugar, nine calories per gram in fat. So the body wants to go for the easiest, quickest energy source, and sugar is the thing that it goes for first. So as long as you have enough carbs that's gonna raise your blood sugar, your body will burn sugar first before it burns fat. If you bring the carbs down low enough, now carbs are the only macronutrient that turns to blood sugar. Remember I told you that. Mm -hmm. When carbs are low enough, it forces the body to burn fat for fuel. That's how the human race has survived, by the way, because you know the, the, the human race would go with, for periods of time without food until they got their kill, and then they would eat and gorge, and then they'd go through a period of mm-hmm. fasting, and then they'd burn fat, and they would always switch between the sugar metabolism and fat metabolism, and that's how we survived. Also, our capacity to store fat more than any other mammal, really, uh, is our ability to survive for so long as well. But All anyway. right. That number one question then I'm bet I'm guessing on most viewers' minds, is it easier for men or women to lose the weight? Because well, it, it always to seems to be an argument. It's easier for men. Uh, I hate to do that. Because they have more <laughs> testosterone. We have estrogen. And estrogen stores fat. I mean, that's just it's just a matter of hormones. They have more muscle mass, so they burn more calories. They have more capacity for muscle mass. They don't always have more muscle mass. <laughs> they have more capacity for muscle mass and they have more testosterone and less estrogen. Yep. So men lose faster than women. So when with the Atkins, um, Atkins low carb, this is very natural eating. Um, I think one of the things Dave and I decided when we d- decided we are all in on this in order to be successful at this, if it was anything more than just kind of the plastic wrap around a piece of whole food, then it pretty much was not on the table for us that yeah. it had to be whole food. So that was kind of right. that number one rule of idea. you know the meat, the vegetables. This is a really, it's a very sustainable way to eat. We found even our waste, um, we weren't even sending out as much trash throughout the week yeah. because there wasn't all the packaging with um, that same thing. So 
you know, right now it's a great time. It's a great time to diet. It's a great time to be low carb because it's summer, spring, you know, when you have access to those fresh foods. What are your suggestions when it's not the great time? And we live in the Rocky Mountains. We don't always have fresh, you know, when you live in those places, you don't have that fresh food. Um, what are your suggestions there? Even yeah. elderly that don't have that opportunity to get to the stores every couple of days that want to try to stay in that, that lifestyle. Well, I usually, I like to make, well, in the wintertime, I make stews and I freeze individual servings and then just take it out and heat it up. Um, I like to make big meals. I don't like to cook every day. So I make big meals and then have leftovers, you know, yeah. for one day. My husband doesn't always like that, but I, I do it all the time. <laughs> and, but, the, but then I'll, I'll buy a rotisserie chicken that doesn't have the hormones okay. and doesn't have the antibiotics. And then I don't have to cook and I have it in my refrigerator canned sardines, canned salmon every once in a while I go for that's okay. easy and simple. But again, I'm creating ways to write. Whole foods are ideal, but it's impossible. I mean, nowadays with keto so popular, there's so many low carb alternatives to yes. high carb foods. Yes. Did you did you try Rebel ice cream yet? Oh yeah, we love it. Oh my god, it's so good. The, the only one I, I can't find is the uh, is the cherry the cherry Garcia like one. That's the only one we can't seem to find. But so they say far, they have it. I haven't. Now seen they have it a triple store. chocolate. This this to die for. And I take so, it as a dare when it's like, really, this whole pint is only seven carbs. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. My husband's like, I can have half a pint. <laughs> I can't go a day without bars. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't go a day without an Atkins bar or shake. I, I hate to be promotional like that, but it's just I depend on them, and it's just convenient. It's easy. It's on the go. I grab it. I go, and it doesn't raise my blood sugar. It satisfies my hunger, and I know what goes into them, so I trust my brand because yep. I watch how they make them. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Well, and I've, I've honestly, we've tried some other brands just because sometimes we'll shop at Costco and then you could buy bulk and I don't get the same results from the other ones because they don't have the same, it's hard to find something that has the right balance and, yeah. and they don't, they don't, in my opinion, don't taste as good. And I don't work for Atkins anymore. So right. <laughs> it's been some right. years. Well, we test our products. We take it to a lab and it, uh, Dr. Woolover is a researcher in Canada. Mm -hmm. He does clinical trials. We give them the product and he tests the blood sugar because the, the key to success on low carb is to keep blood sugar steady because the body is only able to, it's only supposed to be circulating the equivalent of two teaspoons of sugar at a time. That's amazing because let's just all take just a second <laughs> and appreciate just how much sugar is in everything. I'm kind of yeah. taking, I think I'm taking Dave's thunder here on his next line, but seriously, sugar in everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's amazing to me and how easy it was. And he'll attest to this when we're even on a cheat meal, there is no way we can go back to drinking regular pop. It's just, no. um, or soda a year on the East no. Coast. So. You're only supposed to have a teaspoon. So, you have a soda pop that's equivalent to nine teaspoons of sugar that you're yes. pouring into your body at so one time. So much. Yeah, so much. One yeah, time yeah, can kill you. Do that all the time. You're going to break down your blood sugar metabolism. Yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't. Well, I mean, I can't. Like we, if this is the like my biggest pet peeve <laughs> is like, for whatever reason, they don't give you the diet pop and you go through the drive through and like, that's like horrible because like, if yeah. I can't drink it, like even yeah. if I wanted to, which I don't, because I'm like, if I drink this large diet soda, that's going to be or the large for regular the soda when it was supposed to be diet and yeah. they they um, yeah it's it's i mean i i can't do the sugar anymore but i think the things that i thought were the most interesting when you really start watching it and you're really tracking your diet is everything has sugar in it all these processed foods like all the sauces like mm -hmm. catch like and i wouldn't have ever yeah. thought of it like yeah. ketchup and mustard safe but like we we actually this is our our favorite one that we we like to buy is the Taco Bell sauce from like that you could buy in the bottles, zero carb, zero sugar. So that's a like yeah, a go to for yeah. us. Um, <laughs> right. But, you know, so it's, it's, I mean, it's interesting, but you really have to kind of watch it. But I think you kind of learn, you know, what's, 
where to where to look. I mean, it's not hard to do it, but it's it's just crazy the amount of sugar that we put in food. And it's no surprise that so many Americans struggle with weight and diabetes yeah. when you really look at what we put in food. And like if you you know if you go out to um, Italy and stuff, everything's a lot more fresh. And yeah. like I think that's why they you know they have a different kind of of health as far as like weight and stuff. So it's yeah. and you walk everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You do walk everywhere. 